like on the second day of my period, and I've already had a fight with James today, so I'm just ready to cry. I already cried. I was trying to look good for you guys. I tried so hard. I, I don't think I need this. I'm going to move this, and we're going to move around here, so... So this is from our James, my best friend is in the back there, and my long-suffering best friend who, who's mad at me right now. I love you, Tim. I, I try. I try so hard. And um, so anyway, this is our book. I'm going to try and bring it up for you. I will. I can bring it up. Puerto Rican girl. I got it. There's more where that came from. All right, so anyway, this is called The Girl Must Die. Now, this book was out, was born out of, I lost a few friends to suicide. And James and I had been talking, and I wasn't really sure how to um, go into my 40s. And I had just seen that Latinas just seemed to just die. Like, there was a graveyard for us next to the elephant graveyard. And I just felt like I was just starting. And I was just so like, this is fucked up. And then I just started to see, I just, you know, James was so great. He was like, come on, come on, stay in it. And I just started to really see how uh, this stuff, how we undermine ourselves, how we eat our young. And I started to get really angry. And to see how we have been, like, uh, imbibing these mo This is annoying. I'm sorry. Is this, is this distracting you guys? No. But how we imbibe these images from guys who are just kind of have these, these uh, in, uh, ingrown sex drives. And then I was, grow I was brought up <laughs> on the 80s with this shit. And I'm thinking... I've had to fuck a lot of these guys later, and they're all miserable, and I was like thinking, what's the point of all this shit? What's the point of all this? That there's no mystery. After you, you know, and then I saw Inside Job, I don't know if anyone's seen it, and you just go, I cannot believe we let this shit go like this. And that's kind of what happened. I think I was trying to sit things out, and then I started to realize, like, I was calling a lot of stuff, because I'm, I'm mixed. I'm white, and I'm Puerto Rican, so I have... You know, I use that invisibility to my advantage. I mean, my first book advance, $10,000. My mom sits me down with a financial advisor. I feel like I'm the, the inverse of the FBI infiltrating groups. So I'm like, so I was like, all right, okay. <laughs> like, like, if these fools can do this shit to this economy, and I, you guys have no idea. I, I, one day, I will tell you all that I have done, because I used it to my advantage. So we did start... My, we're, we're holding on by the skin of our teeth and we're like, we're going out there, but I went out on tour and I'm really heartened by this, by, by what they're doing here, because everyone's not doing it. So, so teach everyone, because people have forgotten how, I was brought up by Quakers, and people have forgotten how to go back to some of the old, you know, because now black people are trying to be white and pretend, like when Obama denounced his preacher, I just went, that's it, that's it. I don't know who's what anyway, because you just do not do that in America. You do not do that when that's all you have. I don't mean to be up here pontificating. I'm giving you a preface, because now I'm giving you a preface. But that is what, because you have to know that the girl must die. It's just about having the little girl must die so that the woman can rise. And that's where now I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm gonna fucking rise a 43-year-old Puerto Rican girl. Yes. Fuck yeah. <laughs> All right. Because I'm like, I, I have tried to get hit by cars, I have tried to die, and I'm still here. So fine. This is an act of suicide. So, are right, y'all ready? All right now. The girl must die. This is the preface. Now this is what I did was, this was my book that we did, it's, a, it's like I live my life, I write, I do cartoons to, to, as a blueprint for how I want to live. I actually live this shit, I'm exhausted. It is so exhausting. <laughs> but I'm telling you, it is a lot of fun being me. So, all right, and I say, as I say, whatever doesn't kill you will eventually turn you on. <laughs> it better, it better. Okay, so, all right, here we go. The Monster Girl Manifesto. Here we go, over here. So there's some books over there. There's some, we have some black velvet versions too. <laughs> Lesson number one. Preludes are often the best part in life. Anticipation, hope, eagerness, hunger, yearning, promise, and foreplay are what life is really all about. Journey, not destination, blah, 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 blah. Ejaculations Ooh. is overrated. Potential <laughs> never has bad breath. As it stretches across the chaise lounge in the morning sun, imagine the days ahead and all the endless possibilities on the horizon. Potential shivers like a feather down its back, hinting at a myriad uh, of as of yet unimagined scenarios. Lashes are batted, toes are curled, and nipples are hardened. Something 
Something about love is casually dropped like a hanky and slithers across the linoleum like tuberculosis. <laughs> you make it, and promises are made. And it's downhill from there, because to whom much head is given, so much more is expected. Now, <laughs> this is partially my story, but I tell it not as the litany of, as the typical litany of offenses against me, for there are none. I am not here to add to the tomes of victim porn. I undid my childhood all on my own like a tourniquet too tight and careened into womanhood as if in a drag queen race gone awry. I was in such a clumsy hurry to be a penis scraper. I auctioned off my hymen at a bus station. At its best, this is not only my story or even a manual, but also, it's also a monster girl manifesto. A tome for those smoke-filled nights hunched over in the car at 4 a.m. outside in a strange lover's house. When every woman looks in the mirror at her grades reflecting back at her, then tallies up her score and mumbles to herself, to be or not to be. And then, the only question left is whether to set the car on fire or not. The car, fuck the car! Burn down the house, burn it down, burn it clean! Monster girls don't cringe, they make others cringe. This is a monster girl. She's like a, a Neanderthal monster girl class. <laughs> Neanderthal monster girl. Now, this is not for the respectable nine to five girls who fantasize about being single mother strippers, Tijuana, donkey sex stars, or dominatrices in pretty leather gear. No, no, there are dozens of dog-eared editions of grizzly Girl Scout manuals for those forays into animal husbandry and knitting. We do not knit here. All the way we may, what are you doing that for? Appreciation. Oh, okay, I was like, I can't I I'm a, oh, okay, okay, because I was like, I've never seen anyone do the camera. I'm like, all right. I love it, like, like little calls, like, <laughs> all right, we don't need here, although we may use, okay, we don't need here, although we may use your needles to defend ourselves during a misadventure in a Greyhound bus station, this, this is the real deal, we're close knit because you reap what you sow, <laughs> this is, this is for the real McCoy monster girls, not because they want to be, but because they need to be. Now, for some, it's a calling thrust upon them as they emerge from the sea foam on a half shell filled with cigarette butts and use chewing gum with whispered commands like those heard by Joan of Arc and Sybil, their actions directed by an unknown force. For others, it's in their blood. The fuck you DNA that has been passed down from the beginning of time, back when tiny people lived in transistor radios, but John has had teeth, and here suit Neanderthal monster girls squatted by the dinner fire and queef their way through the first supper, leading to the tiny fisted tantrums and quiet tensions at the postmodern dinner tables of today. The girls who are addicted to rich, rat shooting up the hard nipple thrill of societal suicide, the kind of girl who embarrasses felons and psychologically affects the unborn fetuses of passers-by, the chicks with the tenacity of a Jehovah's Witness, the passion of a serial killer, and the undying loyalty of a tapeworm, oh, especially those with the quick twitch keggle muscles. Hi, <laughs> stripper girl. Leave behind your girlfriends in the cubicles with the eternally exasperated Kathy and everlastingly poignant Ziggy cartoons <laughs> uh, pinned to the partitions, the same ones who eat sugar-free jello cups and have fun during their lunch hours making pom-pom creatures tongue kiss each other and yell fresh safe words for another night in their poverty barn dungeons. Manacled by a macrame, they will not survive! There are no safe words for this lifestyle. <laughs> Only triggers. We eat sugar-free nothing for we are sugar. <laughs> Granular, unrefined, and evil. <laughs> oh, there is no on-off switch, no safety net, no do-overs or practice throws. You have only one chance, only like a tightrope walker, one misstep and you'll plummet into the gorge of mediocrity, swallowed up in all the dismal sameness of all the other could-haves in the world! Oh, God, but isn't this great? This <laughs> Pump up those kegels, stripper girls! Be 
because you'll need the stamina to fend off the sensibilities of the unenlightened, the mousy hordes of supposed to be's and the goose stepping politically correcto fascist Nosferatu's who lurk in the shadows of the living for years. Sorry. For years. Are y'all with me still? Yeah. <laughs> now, for years, everyone wanted to be like the boys. They have the courage to say that potlucks suck. <laughs> and, they don't have to, and they don't have to help clear the table after Thanksgiving dinner. And if they take a plate into the kitchen on their way to watch the game in the den, they get a fucking Academy Award. And it's noted by their future eulogy. So, it is no wonder that an entire generation of lesbians are cutting off their tits and calling each other by Old Testament names like Abraham, Ezekiel, Abe, Cain, Samson, Moses, and Lot. Now, don't get me wrong, I love guys. Some of my best friends are guys. <laughs> they've taught me, they've taught me so much. They've taught me how to be a megalomaniacal woman. They've taught me about the emotional Dutch oven. Where, where the caterpillar becomes the serial killer. <laughs> but, hey, right, let's check this shit out, y'all. But the most freeing thing that men have taught me as a self-absorbed person <laughs> is to talk about my feelings without expecting reciprocity. That's fucking page I go my Now, all of the one-sided emotional monologues may have made me just a tad more self-absorbed than I was before, but naturally, I don't mind. <laughs> I, it's such a win-win thing here. Now, now, and I have learned to ramp up my audacity to levels that I never even knew existed outside of the Republican Party. It's been, <laughs> now, for men, for men, their penises have always been the driving force to do things other than that others may disagree with. You know, giving wedges to anything, limping at the edge of the herd starting wars and jumping off of bridges, riding bicycles in empty pools, and getting blowjobs by she-males with big tits. It's the little head that they can hold in their hands like remote control. It's the guy thing, right? Get up, old man, or I'll fuck you right there! Now, I may not be able to gut a zucchini and microwave the skin so that I can fuck it, but I can refuse to end my sentences in question marks. <laughs> Which brings us, I can do anything, free to be you and me, y'all. Now, which brings us to one of the darkest secrets of a true monster girl. She has talking breasts. That's right, she knows, she knows. Forget what the pussy's talking about. Y'all aren't even grown up enough for that shit. <laughs> and not only do they talk, but she also listens. Mm. Listens to both the lactating lessons as well as the mindless impulses from her monster girl man. Now the dividing rounds for grabbing life between the legs and squeezing at first clumsy enough to neuter. Eventually she learns to tug war and peace out in Morse code. Oh wait, here's a bra. Here's a bra. bra picture. Oh, I'm sorry, I would be such a crappy teacher. Oh wait, okay, here's, here's a fish. We'll get to the fish in a second. Now, any girl's, any monster girl's interpretation of the classics is just sought far and wide. I mean, we can all agree upon that, right? Now, some of you may think, malarkey, you got the chocha talking, and now with their tits talking, will they be talking to each other? Or, between monster girls' ass and elbows, will they ever be able to get a word in edgewise? <laughs> now, I hear you complaining, I hear you complaining, and the envy is palpable enough to be sliced like a velveted cheese artery as you continue, tits don't talk, they, advise, they don't advise, they don't encourage, breasts are bait. That's it, they lure, they seduce and wiggle like a worm on a hook waiting for some dumb fish to bite, which then gets pulled into the boat while the dumb fisherman bangs it on the head till it's dead. <laughs> All chicks got tits, at least started out with a set before they lost one or the other to life's demands or opportunities. But all chicks are not monster girls. Now, does that make some 
chicks' tits mute? Do chicks with baby tiny tits talk like, hi, squeaky portion? <laughs> well, double D's like mine sound like very white. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not like that. And if you have to ask, you can't afford it. And if you have to ask and you can't afford it, go get your money back. But really, if you have to ask, you shouldn't even be here. Because this is for those who aren't afraid to run like a girl, fuck like a girl, dance like a girl, demand like a girl, punch like a girl, love like a girl, run like a girl, kill like a girl, cry like a girl, throw like a girl, hate like a girl, bite like a girl, no like a girl, age like a girl, burn like a girl, fist like a girl, ejaculate like a girl. <laughs> yeah, James, you want to drive home with me now? <laughs> San Francisco's a long way home. There we go. There's an ejaculation picture looks like. And there's our ride like a girl picture. Okay, so here we go. Okay, let's see. Are y'all with me still? What's going on? on, on? <laughs> As is the case with many actors' heights, life is also much shorter than you thought. And living it to the fullest may make it even shorter, but it is so fucking worth it. Because monster girls, we made for life. Now after a decade ringside in the abyss, watching the black dogs rip apart my arm, the arms and legs of my former hopes choke on the tendons of my ideals, drain the last of my beliefs and shit out my enthusiasms on a nightly basis, I am going to gum and claw my way up and out. I'm going to slither back to my glory days and rightful place at the head of the rickety kids' table. And it's also why I paid in full, with added penalties and interest, to think, do, say what I've seen, felt, think. The consequences of pissing anyone off pale in comparison to the consequences I've already experienced and trying to be small, tiny, polite, and quiet. And let's see how this fucking monster girl memoir thing goes. It's still early morning. I'm sorry, I told you second day of my period. <laughs> and you all are so right. So I can just, I'm half white, but that part has long since left me alone to just fend for myself. <laughs> fuck it. I tried to make you have something to fall back on. Fuck it. Anyway, all right, let's focus. Let's see how this monster girl memoir thing goes. It's still early morning, and by tonight I could be passed out with my head bobbing lifelessly in the toilet while a curious paramedic checks between my legs to see if my hair is naturally curly. <laughs> but this is San Francisco, not Holly goddamn work. So far, so good. The first taste of doing anything your way is free, and from then on, man, oh, girl, you're hooked, you're hooked. <laughs> from then on, you pay. You pay and you get strung out by simply trying to maintain. And this is not about the non-refundable price you pay to do it your way. One must dare, or this is about the non-refundable price you pay. I forget, I'm crying, I don't know what it's about anymore, I'm fucking clueless. But I do know that one must dare to be alienated and cast aside, because it is how we find each other. And the pace of blinds are always drawn in your own blood. You have to remember, you know that shit, it's drawn in your own fucking blood. The wacky pratfalls come from tripping through your own intestines. Yeah, that's your quivering heart down there in the gutter. Leave it right there where it is because it'll cushion your fall. But it's so worth it, you all. It is. This is not about fitting in, clearing dishes, being polite, gritting your teeth, and getting along over the holidays. This is not about belonging to community, no matter what the cost is. This is a monster girl memoir about facing myself at high noon, as I would face any creepy fairy tale, and why it behooves us to be messy and insane. This is a little more insane, y'all. This is fucked up. This is crazy magic. I mean, I can't promise it'll net you a 24-inch fucking waist, 
or even a 42 inch fucking waist. The love of your life, or even a used sofa from this street that, that reeks of urine. But none of that, none of that will matter. When your laughs always, always sound like soul music from 1977. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Thank you, you guys. Thank you.